Well, today I'm going to show you basically the beginning of my new project, which is, well, I call it a spud cannon because that's what it's based off of, but the idea of this one is to shoot pretty much all sorts of things, spuds as well, but I've got a lot of these empty CO2 canisters, and the more I play airsoft and the more air gunning I do, the more I seem to accumulate. And they're a dollar, more or less, for one of these, and I get my money's worth out of it by shooting a bunch of pellets or BBs or airsoft BBs and stuff like that, and then either throw it away or recycle it. Uh, they're hard to recycle too, for one, but they're kind of wasteful, so I figured, well, <laughs> why not turn into a projectile? And I can't take full credit for this. I've watched a few different um, videos. Um, one of them would be, I think his name is Royal Nonsuch, and he does all sorts of experimentations with these. Um, one, he loads shotgun shells with them and has devices that puncture these to fire off the CO2 and make them into a rocket. So I decide, well, I'm going to take the Spud Cannon, which is a friend of mine. I'll be, I think you should see the video of that before this video even comes on. And um, it's based off of that design along with the PVC Spud Cannons you see and Royal Non such as um, Shotgun. I sort of put all those ideas together into making this what I call a propane rifle. Now, one thing about this is I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work. It's still an experimentation. But if it doesn't work, I do know this. I can still get a muzzle flash out of the barrel, and it does make a pop sound. So whether this works or not for firing these off, it'll still make a really cool uh, steampunk-style prop kind of thing where you can get you know, a pop and a muzzle flash sort of for... Um, movie making, LARPing, stuff like that. Just just fun shit. So for, what you would do is you load one of these down the barrel, hook up a gas tank to this, whether it be on a hose or it be on a... There you go. See, I'm magic. I can just make things appear out of nowhere. So we've got the uh, propane tank with a hose or one of these cans. Or you could also use a soldering propane can, oxyacetylene, pretty much all sorts of things. And the idea of this is this just threads into here, whether it be this can, so it's kind of like the magazine, or you could, instead of having a bulky can hanging off it, you could also hook up a hose instead, hooked up to your five pound propane canister that you'd throw in a backpack and that would just thread in like so. So it keeps, keeps you going. And you would undo this, open up the canister, or if it's just this thing, you just open this up, let some gas fill up in here. You've already got your projectile um, thrown into the muzzle. It's down at the bottom. So it creates somewhat of a seal. The gas would be accumulating in here. And this is where your spark plug comes into play. Um, now this is just an experiment. I don't know if this spark plug will work. I've got another backup plan. That's where these come into play. They're just extra fittings. Uh, I'm probably not going to use this one, but end up using this end cap going into here. Then I'll drill a small little hole somewhere along in here, put my barbecue igniter. I've got a barbecue igniter coming. It's just on order. It's not here yet. But a friend of mine says that this might work as well, is where I hook the barbecue igniter up to the spark plug and run it through and get the spark out of the spark plug. I might have to take the uh, fuse out of the spark plug to make it work. Um, he'll need to talk me through that exactly, because honestly I don't know for sure. But I've got two plans, so if this doesn't work, the backup plan is just to do the old traditional way. So, but I really want to use a spark plug. I thought it'd be longer lasting. I wouldn't um, have to replace it as much as to um, the barbecue igniters. Those wires are pretty frail. I could see them not lasting as long. So, that's basically the gun itself. And of course, once you spark the sparker, it's going to ignite that. It expands, pushing out your projectile, hopefully at incredible speeds. 
So um, I'll quickly show you the barrel assembly before we get into what this piece of paper is for. Now, the one I've seen that you've, you see at the beginning of the video, what he's done is he's just stuck one of these in here. And he's got the propane hooked up to this, so that's his igniter as well. Which I thought was genius, but I just couldn't find the right kind of igniter, one that was strong enough that would hold up to what I wanted to do. And plus, it held it out really far, makes it kind of bulky, bulky and awkward. I wanted something that's low and slow, uh, low profile. So just before we get into this and the setup of where the igniter is going to be, I'll show you the barrel. So our um, projectile is still technically inside. So I'll just slip it out. So what I've done here is I've choked the inside of it so this doesn't fall all the way through. Um, as you can see, I don't know if you can see actually, I'll have to hold something. Here we go. There you go. So there's the CO2 right in there. So. What, how I did that was I got a small, oops, sorry, I was just trying and set up the camera again. All right, so what I did was I've got this um, small piece of pipe that fits in there almost perfectly, and I had to squeeze a bunch of this epoxy putty around in there to make sure it fit. That was actually quite a chore. The pipe kept moving around, the epoxy putty wasn't wanting to stick, so I had to sand it by quite a bit, get it really... Um, get all the grease off it and then uh, it took me about five attempts and I finally got it to sit and set and I got it in there real strong. I think that a propane blast is going to it's going to hold and withstand. I mean PVC pipe holds up to it so I'm pretty sure this epoxy will. It's stronger than PVC. And what I did was I threaded the inside to match the threads of this so I drilled a hole into my my cone cap here and I threaded this in, like literally threaded it, and then I epoxied the crap out of it. So it makes a nice seal and it'll never twist out, things like that. Heat, heating and cooling with the expansion, hopefully the epoxy holds up. And um, like this thing's not going to get too hot. I'm not going to be rapid firing. I'm going to be just firing off once in a while type thing. So it should be okay. Um, this is also an, uh, hopefully going to... Um, ward off birds. That's another idea. If I can make it shoot and get the muzzle flash, make it pop. Uh, it'd be perfect to scare off the ravens and eagles when they're harassing chickens and stuff like that. So I'll give you a quick um, demo of this, um, basically the barrel and the projectile, and then we'll talk about this piece of paper. Okay. So, just move over a bit. So I've got my uh, barrel, and we load our projectile down into there, and there it sits. As you can see, the CO2 canister is just like so. So just me blowing through it, it flies there and actually hit the couch. So um, just me blowing lightly, like it's already launching out of the barrel, no problem. So expanding of the um, of propane firing out there. It's really going to fire this thing out. And one more thing I can do with this is I could solder on little teeny flights. I could put three flights on there, make it fly more stable, just as an option. So, um, yeah. All right, now you're probably wondering what the hell is this piece of paper? Well, it's going to be the template to the stock I'm going to build for it. Uh, here, I'll just put this barrel quickly back on. So, yeah, you can just see it's just an empty tube with the spark plug in the end and propane feed. And then it co-annealers, so it pushes all the gas in through that little choke, which is about a half inch diameter. And the big barrel is actually a three quarter inch diameter internal. So, there you go. So this is a thumb hole through stock that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be uh, basically four inches by eight, rough cut. And then I need to uh, sand it down and rasp it into shape. So as you can see, it's going to sit somewhat like that. And 
will fit pretty good. I've cut this stock to fit me perfectly. It's a, a custom fit to me. So uh, I'll get a perfect 90 degrees in my left, um, sorry, in my right arm and the forearm grip I'll be holding right here. And I plan to be uh, mounting most likely my barbecue igniter on the forearm grip here. So all I have to do is squeeze it like so to fire it. There'll be no trigger over here. This is just strictly just a hold. So it's going to be almost like a left left-handed activation to fire, and the right hand is going to be the stabilizing, and you've got the stock up against your shoulder. So um, yeah, that's basically my principle to how this is going to work. I've still got quite a bit of work to do as I have a stock to manufacture, and I've got a uh, got my, uh, what's it called, the uh, barbecue igniter on its way. It should be here Thursday. So, um, yeah, once I've got that going, I'll be ready to test fire this thing. And then once it makes sure it works, I can go ahead and mount it to a stock. So, turn into a finished product and make it into a rifle about that this long. I'll just pull out a little bit so you guys can see. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's a pretty cool project. It's something I've wanted to do for quite a long time, but just never got around to doing it. And finally, I've had some spare time where, and also all the spare parts where it sort of made it um, easy to do. I spent about, about $60 in total just gathering bits for it, but that was over a time. It wasn't all one one purchase. So, uh, there you go. And um, This would be the heavy option to go with, of course, is the five pound propane tank. You can go bigger, but that's just heavier. This uh, named Buttercup, it's, <laughs> it's a heavy little bastard. So, uh, these are much better and also you can get propane hose adapters for these as well so this doesn't have to sit on the bottom of the gun like so you can have a hose throw this in your backpack and have just a hose coming off the gun so there you go I don't know I thought that was just a cool project I thought I'd share and you know maybe um, some people can give me some tips and ideas hey if you want to make me a stock um, I, I will not object to that. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We've got the uh, cannon and igniter system. So as you see, I've got a spark plug on the end there. That's going to be taken out now, and we're going to be using these two probes instead. I think I'll get a better spark if I do it this way as to uh, using the spark plug. So as you can see, I've got these probes. We'll, we'll just put them about there, that far apart. And we'll hold this a little bit away from my hands, and you guys will see a spark. Sorry, I have to get a little bit closer. Ooh, I got shocked. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to zoom in a bit more. And uh, hold on a second. What we have done is just turn down the lights a little bit, and you will see right here that I'll have a spark. So, the distance I'm going to want them maybe a little bit closer, so they always spark. So there we go, um, just by pushing this button. Now I had to figure this out, there's no instructions whatsoever to um, put these things together. I looked up wire diagrams and they're actually more confusing than just figuring it out yourself. So the way I put this together is just one lead on this short one lead. These are the two that are close together. You've got this one sitting out. Uh, that's for another um, probe, so you can basically have, I guess, three burners lit up at once. I'm guessing. I really don't know. There's no instructions. The instructions are, are absolutely useless. I threw them away because they didn't tell me anything. They just told me basically what I had, and that was that. They don't tell you anything about putting it together, except for a couple shitty pictures, and that's how to put it together back into the barbecue, which we're not doing. All I wanted was a wire, wire diagram of how this thing works and how to put the damn thing together. That's all I wanted. So anyways, I um, tried looking on YouTube, or not YouTube, Google. It was just more 
confusing than anything, so I gave it up and just started just putting it together. And I, I figured it out. So anyway, just to make it simple for you guys, so you don't have to go around and fucking reteach yourself all this stupid bullshit that really was not necessary. Um, this comes off. There's a little metal spring with a contact, and your battery actually goes inside here. Which I would have not known because the instructions actually didn't even tell me that. So if you don't know, that's how you replace your battery for your barbecue igniter. And it just threads back on. I mean, it's not that hard, but if you just grab this out of the box, it may try and make sense of it. It's almost intimidating not to bother. You don't want to work with it if, if they're not going to make it simple. So anyway, that's enough of that rent. Um, so I figured it out. That's, that's the good part. And I just uh, decided to show you guys how to, how to do it as well. So that's uh, the system to go inside of our cannon. Now since you last saw it, the barrel was longer. I took the barrel, uh, I, I've um, shortened the barrel to 18 and a half inches long. And I've got, um, this can go away because this is coming off, that's the spark plug. I've epoxied on two bolts for fastening the, the gun to the stock. And we're going to drill out the stock to accommodate the gas line. Um, so that's that. You'll see the stock in just a minute. It is still in the process of being made, but I've got all the stencils cut out. I've cut out the, uh, the, the forms, and they are in the process of being glued together. So what we're basically going to be doing here is this cap is going to be our replacement. And I'm going to put a probe, I think... Now, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this for sure. I haven't decided. I may just put the cap in the end. And this is actually probably the way I'm going to end up doing it, is by putting a probe in on this side and a probe in on that side. Just drill them like that so they're about a quarter inch apart from each other. One will go there, one will go there, and they'll spark out sort of in that area. And I think that'll be the best way to make this work. Uh, this is going to be a takedown rifle, as in the barrel will thread out, and the gun can basically be shorter and be put into a box or a bag. So it's um, going to be sitting on a rifle. Now this could be taken off the rifle platform, or I should say the rifle stock, and it could be a three-part gun or a two-part gun. I don't know if I mentioned this, so I'm going to go ahead and mention it anyway. I've choked the... Um, uh, oh yes, I did mention this. Okay, so anyway, yeah, I've, I've choked out the, um, the, the 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 breech a little bit. It's not really a breech in this case because you're not actually putting a round in here. This is gonna be a muzzle loader. I'm putting the the round down the, the the barrel, and it's acting more like a chamber just to catch the the thing that we're gonna be shooting. This could shoot potato spuds, no problem. But I'm basically designing it to fire off the old uh, CO2 canisters after I've used them. So I sort of get a second projectile, just kind of fun, launch them off, you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just sort of a, a fun project I thought of trying out and basically tried to do. So uh, I'm going to thread this out. I'm going to play around with the spark plug and see if I can actually make this igniter work with the spark plug, where I could maybe use it and not have to drill out the two sides. But if I have to drill out the two sides, I'm more than prepared to do that. And I just uh, seal them in with a little bit of uh, JP weld, probably. If not, I use a two-part uh, epoxy putty mix. So I guess we'll uh, move on to the next part. So I just crappily taped these probes onto the spark plug, one on the one end and one on the chassis. So we'll see what happens. We'll just uh, aim this in here and push the button. Oh, I saw a little bit of a spark just a second ago. Oh yeah. We're getting a little spark in there, so it it does kind of work. Um, however, just because of the um, the lack of spark we're getting out of there, in my opinion, it's not that great. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of works, but it just doesn't work as well as those probes sitting sitting independently. So I think that's what we're going to end up doing. Is we're just going to uh, independent. Um, put those probes in there and not worry about this back end. This will be our, our end cap and I'm basically going to put this in here. I'm going to put one probe in on this side, one probe basically in on the other side. Something on the rough lines of that. 
and that's how we're going to make this thing ignite. So, uh, there you go. Anyways, uh, we'll move on to the stock. <laughs> Alright, we're outside of my deck. So, this is the stock I am building. So the uh, gun is going to sit right on there, with the barrel extending out by a little bit. The... <coughs> shit. I don't want to be doing that. Um, don't want to be knocking things around here. So the, yeah, the, the, the gun will be sitting there. And I'm going to drill out this to and cut it out to accommodate the gas tank. I've deliberately left a lot of wood on it at the moment, so I have full... Um, strength of the wood because this right here is quite a weak spot seeing I've cut out this and cut the notch down so there's not very much wood in that zone so I added these two leaves on each side to bulk it up make it more sturdy and strong if there's any kind of recoil or it getting thumped around stuff like that now this is a little overrated because like this isn't a real real recoil of like guns it's 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 a potato cannon more or less so I don't think there'll be massive recoil, but I decided to build it for it anyways. So I've sort of taken, to some degree, almost the style of the L96, just the back end of it, because um, I quite like the, the thumb hole stock, so... But I want my own design, so I did uh, cut it to my own shape. I've got the, uh, the stencil. This didn't actually end up being quite like the stencil. Um, the stencil I had was for a 2x8, and I ended up only being able to get 2x6. So I squatted everything down and I built the cheek piece as a separate part to get some more length out of it. Because 2x6 is from here to there. So that's all I had to work with. So I ended up uh, using the two pieces instead of a... I really wanted a 3x8 is what I wanted to cut my stock out of. But I ended up getting uh, two 2x6s, about uh, close to five, 5 feet or so of 2x6 to and it took pretty much all of it. So, there you go. This is five feet of wood, <laughs> of uh, two by sixes. This is all cut out of one piece, and this this part of the stock was cut out of another piece. So I bought, yeah, two short pieces of two by six for very, very cheap. Uh, I think I put about $20 in on the stock, and that's that. And uh, so in total, I think this gun is probably cost about 50, close to $50, which is expensive for a potato cannon, but it's it's all metal, and... I'm not calling this really a cannon. It's more of a. It's more like a um, a propane rifle. That's basically what I would call it. Is a propane rifle. So uh, yeah, I've got a lot of rasping to do, lots of sanding, and a lot of glue removal. So that's uh, pretty much what we got. So you might want to know why I haven't put it into a vise or into a clamp. Well, I just don't have any that are big enough. So I'm making do with what I got using. A weight just to hold those two pieces together they're gonna sit there all night and tomorrow morning I well uh, the next day that I end up working on this it won't be tomorrow but um, next day that I'm working on it, it will be rasping sanding and starting to fit everything together and of course I got a lot of cutting out to do I need to um, notch out a section for my uh, igniter bee I need a pipe running from the for the wires, taking them to where I want them to go. So I, I definitely want the wires housed in something. I don't just want them taped to the side of the gun. It'll look ugly. I'd rather use uh, housing and strapping. Sort of using conduit, that's the best way to put it. And uh, keeps everything all nice and tight and snug. Because if I'm putting this much work into it, I kind of want this to look nice. I want it to look like... A, like an actual, like, something I'd be proud to hang on my wall with all my other firearms. So, <laughs> that's basically the goal, and I'm really hoping I can get it. So, um, and like I said, if it doesn't actually launch these CO2 things, it's just going to be a LARP gun for muzzle flashes, but I really think it'll work. So, there you go. Uh, so, we'll take a look at this when it's all dry. And, yeah, I've got a lot of rasping to do. A lot of uh, evening out and sanding, sort of. I deliberately left more wood than... I wanted, so I'd just be able to remove wood. It's a lot easier to remove wood than add wood, of course. So, that's why it's so bulky at the moment. Okay, so excuse the tools now, and just show you what we've got going on now. So we've got the ignition put together. I'll try not to cast a shadow on here. So we've got our switch right here, and the leads leading up to our two probes, and inside, I don't think you'll be able to see very well. So we'll just 
just take the back plug off, and you can see the two probes. Now, as you can see, there is sparking going on. Now, it's not as good as I wanted. Um, I may play around with it a little bit more, but we're just going to give it a quick little test fire and see how it works. Um, we're just going to spritz a little bit of propane in and uh, see what kind of flash we can get. So we're just going to thread on our barrel real quick and we're going to give this a quick little uh, flash test fire. So what we do is we will put this one pound propane can on just like so. Going to open up some gas in there and close this up and see what happens. So we'll get this muzzle out. <laughs> now it's not wanting to spark inside here now. For some reason, my probes are not working so we're gonna undo the can <laughs> and we need to play around these with these these probes more uh, they're not making making the contact just blow some <laughs> propane out because I don't want to flash it in the face I'll just open up the back cap <laughs> That's weird, so now we're getting a spark in there again. But I could hear it wasn't sparking, so I'm just gonna give it a little quick little flash without the barrel and see what happens. We'll put this cap on. I just put the back cap on. Looks like we're back to the drawing boards. We're getting, we are getting sparking going on, but it's not enough to uh, give a boom for some reason. I don't want to have a torch going off. No. All right then, we'll just open up this back end out. Woo! <laughs> there you go. Um, I know what's going on. I just made a flash. Um, not getting enough oxygen in there. So I need to find out a way to get my oxygen in. Um, guess I'm gonna need a fan or something. Uh, <laughs> it's back to the drawing board looks like because I can get this to, to flare up when I open up the back end. Uh, we'll just try this now. No. I just got shocked. <laughs> yeah, I gotta watch out with these things. I like to jump the, the voltage. So I'm just gonna open this up. And you'll see we'll get a pop. Oh, maybe not. Anyway, I don't really wanna mess around. Um, this is indoors. I don't wanna burn down my house. So, looks like we are back to the drawing board here and try and find out what's going wrong with uh, why the ignition's not working properly. I think it's got an issue to do with oxygen. We're just not getting enough air in there. And um, I don't have enough room to put a fan in. So I don't know. It might be it might be a failed attempt here. Kind of annoying. Ow, shit. Yeah, I just keep shocking myself. So um I don't know. I'm going to take apart this ignition system and play around with it more. Try and get this thing working. Okay, so here's the stock so far with a little bit of rasping done. We got it um, laminated and we are now slowly rasping it down to profile. Still got a lot of work to do. I've got it marked out for where uh, these two and this are going to go through. That's 
this is going to be marked out two inch hole for the uh, gas line and then holes with recesses marked out for my um, for the bolts to attach the uh, propane rifle to the actual uh, gun and I have some recess marked out for for this these uh, probe I cut at an angle they're going to be notched into here within the wires coming somewhere out of here once I slim it down and drill it out and then there'll be some copper pipe most likely running around his housing to this thing which will be my um, igniter which is basically going to be notched out in here and mounted like well actually it's going to be like so and the reason that is is I plan to hollow out a lot of this after I've got my holes drilled and I'm going to mill out a channel in here that this pipe will sit down on the ribs of and have enough to hold the barrel but most of it's going to be held in by the bolts and then I want to run the wires all inside it so it's uh, the wires aren't hanging off the outside and snagging. Any wire that's sticking outside the gun will be inside a housing, uh, most likely copper tube, so it just looks nice and um, is kept protected and as well as um, this is very thin insulation and I find it arcs out a little bit and one can get shocked from it when you're pushing this. Uh, it jumps a little bit. So that's one thing to be careful. I've been shocked a few times by this uh, this igniter. But as you can see, it's it's working. And we just got a little bit of a um, little teeny flash going on at the muzzle there because I have it just a little bit of gas stored up in here. Uh, I've still got a um, an oxygen issue to get in here, so I'll probably be making some form of supercharger or a turbo to put air into uh, our cylinder so you can get a propane air mix. So I've still got some tweaking to do on the actual gun itself, but as far as getting the rifle built, I'm just going gung-ho and doing it. Um, because as long as I can get it together and get it as a rifle, it'll it'll look good and it can always be an art piece if, if it doesn't work the way I want it to, but I really want I'm really going to try and get this thing actually working. That That is the real goal. So hopefully we can get this done. Woo. Got all my uh, stuff out where I can see it. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, I'm going ahead and gluing in the ignition anyways. I know the ignition works. Um, that's not my issue. What my issue is definitely oxygen. Because when I opened up the back end and then ignited, that's when I got the big boom of... Uh, well, I singed all my hairs, basically, because, yeah, it, fire came out both ends. So, <laughs> I'm just lucky I didn't burn myself. So, once these epoxy things dry, I'm going to set my uh, the, um, the probes that are inside there, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to set them at distance, which will just be pushing one, one way and one the other way, uh, just slightly bending them with a push stick. And that will get them to a space where they will spark with a good arc. Uh, and that will probably help with my uh, ignition here. So, um, yeah, just basically got to let these dry. I drilled them bigger, the two little holes, uh, and stuck them in all the way. Because what was happening was, the even though I tried insulating the probes, uh, they were grounding out a little bit on my housing because it's metal. So I put the ceramic all the way through, and I'm using this uh, JP Epoxy Weld to hopefully um, hold it in place. And of course it's all going to be held in with the stock as well. So these are going to come through the stock at an angle with my pipe uh, housing to uh, take uh, the wire over to the trigger on either side. So um, it's kind of design. So we'll let these dry, and then we'll play around with ignition. Okay, so I've got my stock basically beginning of rasping, and we have the um, the handle here, and it's still got a lot of meat on it. We've got a lot of um, rasping down to do and shaping. I want to make all this sort of curved into so it's one piece and uniform. You don't get these lines and uh, glue glue marks like you got right here. 
I want to make it all so it sort of looks like one one piece of wood, kind of like what I'm working on with this. So, still got lots of sanding and rasping to do, but I've got the rough form of it. It's the way I want it. I've got um, this all milled out for our connections here. Uh, I've still got to, of course, mill it. I've just got it marked out. And our gas line. So we're going to basically drill out our holes to fit everything and then after that we will mill out this whole inside section and make a deep channel so I can lay my wire and stuff in there. And then I'll put two little holes through the side and notch it out and fasten my, or my um, igniter on the side of here and that's going to be my trigger. I've sort of played around with different ways to uh, mount this and I think I'm going to mount it right there on the side. It's probably the best way. In fact, it's going to be like that. So, um, yeah, I've got that to do still. And uh, I've got the actual mounting to do. Then basically, once we've got the stock sanded down and finished, we will um, have a rifle. But the rifle won't be fully done as I've got some some work to do on making this cannon go boom. Uh, what happens is I don't have enough oxygen mixing in here so it's not igniting properly. I get a little flare sometimes out of here when when it is working but most of the time it isn't. So I basically have to design a fan system that's going to put air into here. It'll probably be a system that's going to sit on top. Here I'll just quickly show you guys in a second what I plan to do here. Okay, so we've got the ignition ready. I've um, epoxied the two caps in, our electrodes, and I'll just take off this back for a second. And you can see the inside. Those are the two uh, probes. So I'm going to try and hold this in a way that you guys can see the spark. I gotta turn out the light though, because just make it a little easier to see. So hopefully I don't get shocked, because this does happen. I'm gonna push this button, and there you go. It's actually working. And I'm not getting sparked at all, so my ignition's done. It's a little bit of work, but it wasn't too difficult. And uh, now what I need to do is find a way to mount it to the stock. I've got, of course, uh, do a lot of milling. I need to drill out two angled holes to, or notches, probably most likely, to accommodate the, um, the wiring. And uh, drill out uh, my, mill out the area for my tank, and that thing to fit so I can uh, turn on and off the gas and I need to then sculpt that stock down to fit these bolts where I can tighten the uh, the device down onto the stock. So now I've got a lot of work to do on the stock. That's pretty much all the work I have now. Um, I may have to reconfigure a way to get air into this. Uh, basically like I'm going to basically build a supercharger for it. It's uh, going to be a uh, little intake with a fan with a funnel going down into a small pipe that's going to have a little valve on it. <laughs> Where uh, Now there's two ways I was thinking of doing this. It's either have a fan or I could have a Schrader valve with a pump and actually pump air into there. Or I, I also thought of just having a, a valve pipe that I blow into and I can blow some air into there and then close the pipe to keep the compression going. And that could also work. So <laughs> it's sort of still in, in, in the middle of being designed. Um, if this thing works without needing to get air in there, then I'll just keep it as is. I'm of course going to try it out. I'll, uh, as possible, it just wasn't sparking properly when, when I was trying to do it before, so we'll play around with it. We will make this work, but um, I may have to design a basically some form of supercharger to, to, to get air, air mix with the propane. So it's a little more explosive. So, uh, yeah, well, guess we're moving on to the stock now.
Okay, so the rifle is actually upside down right now. Um, sorry, the stock isn't, but the rifle itself is. It's going to be uh, milled out, so this can all just drop into place. And then once you've, you've done that, um, the wires will be all hidden inside, drilled through the side there, and the igniter is just going to sit like so. So uh, that's basically what it's going to look like. Um, so I've got still a lot of work to do on the stock. And then when this is on, that's going to be like that, um, but deeper down. So we will pretend it's it's on there, more or less. So kind of like that. Uh, of course, it's going to be more square. You won't see these wires. And that'll sit flush there. And what I plan to do is then have a tube along the side here, just sitting off to the side where I can still put a scope on there, and it won't be in the way of the scope, and that'll be the air intake uh, system that I need to still design and build. So that's probably where it's going to be fitted to, um, to keep it sort of um, compact and, and on the gun, so it's not a, something that's sort of in the way and, and being cumbersome. So. That's sort of the idea there, and uh, yeah, I've still got some designing to do, but as you can see, the progress is definitely coming. Okay, so you can see I've milled it out, and we've got a channel through here that comes through and basically uh, hooks everything up. So I've changed this a little bit. I have actually soldered all of this in place instead of the epoxy putty. Unfortunately the epoxy putty didn't work very well, it just uh, popped out of place when I tried clamping those bolts down. So I soldered them in place. They're pretty secure now and I soldered also the, uh, the, the gas valve. So it's all soldered. We've wrapped these around. So what happens is these holes go through the little channel that we carved out for the igniter switch and this just plops down into place. So these two wires poke out, we flip it upside down, we put a washer and a washer, and we just tighten those down. Now you can always reef it down a little bit with a crescent wrench, but I'm just doing it hand tight just for, um, for now. And we have a propane tank. So, we're going to put our igniter now to the on. Just clips in and clips into place once I get that on. There, got it on. And that'll glue down onto there, but I actually have to mill a bit more down, get this a little more flush in there. But for starters, it basically is a rifle. I've just got a lot of sanding and rasping to do now. We'll uh, put our, our uh, tank in. Just hope this works. Hey! So, our tank is in place along with our um, grip. So, uh, I'll get a better view in a minute, but as you can see, it is pretty much ready to go. So we'll open up this valve, and I can hear the gas going in. We'll close it. Now I don't know, I've got some more work to do to try and get the actual spark and combustion going. So I think I need to get more oxygen in here. I'm just going to open up this back a little bit. But anyways, <laughs> I've got it to the point where gas is going in into our combustion chamber right there. But we don't have enough oxygen to make a muzzle flash or it to actually go boom yet. So uh, I've basically got to figure out how to get a carburetor into my propane rifle. And of course I've got some work to do on the stock just to make it more uh, uh, ergonomical, 
um, and uh, comfortable to hold. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll just um, excuse the mess, but as you can see, the rifle is in place. We have the, uh, the gun in place. Um, still needs a little bit of, ow, I just got shocked. <laughs> so it needs a little bit of work still. And of course, uh, to make it so it, of course, goes boom. But you can see inside there, I'm sure, there is a spark. But, uh, I don't know. I I've still got some, uh, some tinkering to do with this, but as you can see, it's a weird looking bulky rifle, but in theory it works, <laughs> it just, it needs some tinkering. And of course some, some uh, fine tuning and of course the uh, combustion chamber. So since this is a lengthy video, I'm going to do my next um, part two as, as the carburetor for this thing and not make it all one video because there's, yeah, quite a bit to do still. So the next video will be this slimmed down a lot more and trying to get air into our system to make it go bang. So, but that's progress so far. I've got, uh, of course, uh, quite a bit more work to do, but as far as the uh, it looking like a rifle, <laughs> We've accommodated that. We've got it securely snug to the stock so it's not rattling around and not um, wanting to fall off. So I'm pretty happy so far. Uh, the only thing I'm disappointed in, of course, is we're not getting it to, uh, to fire. So we'll be on part two with uh, getting this thing to fire.